guys, I'm back here at home and it's the day after filming part one of Flip or Fold 24 Hours featuring the Galaxy Z Flip 4. If you haven't watched that video, make sure to watch that one first. I'll put a link up here as well as down below. Today, I'm going to do the same thing but now feature the Galaxy Fold 4. So we're going to unbox it first. I'm going to show you this special case that came along with it. And then we're going to put on some shoes and head out to somewhere in Brooklyn to put the phone through its paces. All right, let's get started. Open Sesame. Looks like we have the Fold 4 in gray green. Interesting color name. Now, there's nothing else in here, but behind the lid is the rest of the package. So all you have to do is pull on this, and inside we should find some goodies. You have a quick start guide, USB cable, and a SIM tray ejector tool. Since we're in the studio, let's see if we can film some ASMR. He didn't make that much of a noise. There you go. I know a lot of you are asking, so there you go. Fresh out of the box, there is a crease. And then there's your gray green. Maybe later when we're outside, we can actually get some green hints because right now it's just looking really gray. Okay, I want to power it on before we do our first fold unfold. It's always a strange feeling doing it for the first time. Some important things to keep in mind. I'm careful not to press hard or sharp objects on the screen. If only use the S Pen. Be careful when you fold it shut that there's no dust or like dirt trapped in the middle because that could scratch the screen as well. Notice the apps here I have on the bottom of the screen. When I flip to this window, they kind of minimize into what looks like a dock. And then when I swipe back to the home screen, they go back. I'm really thrilled because yesterday I was also able to pick this up. It's a case with an S Pen and a stand and a holster for your S Pen all in one. Let's check it out. All right, I can't wait to see this. Okay, it comes in a couple of pieces. There's the back cover, the front bumper. You might have seen this case in our Z Fold hands-on. You have the back shell and you have interchangeable modules. This one is for the S Pen so that you can carry your S Pen Fold Edition with you. Goes in here like that. And then here is like a bumper case for the front. So it would go like this. And the front cover would slide in like this. There's a bit of a lip to protect the screen. All right, time to set up the phone. I'm gonna charge it to 100% and then we're gonna head out of here. All right, change of plans. I woke up with pain in my ear today, so I figured because tomorrow is the weekend, I'd go and have it checked, and I was able to get an appointment with a specialist today in Manhattan, so that's where I'm headed. I'm going to meet up with Chai there. I'm filming this with the uh, front cam of the Galaxy Z Fold 4 using, I think, 4K 30 FPS, but we'll also switch to the back camera as well. And then we'll probably, I know I said we'll take you around Brooklyn. We might hang around uh, that area of Manhattan for a little bit and then come back to Brooklyn later on in the evening. One hour later. Sorry about that interruption. Everything is fine. I have some meds. I'm going to pick them up later. I'm reunited with Chai. So now we can actually begin this video. I unplugged the phone at 12 noon. I charged it to make sure that we started at 100%. I've been using this phone to navigate to my doctor, follow up on some social media posts, 
reply to some of your comments on YouTube Creator Studio. So I've used the phone, uh, screen on time is an hour and eight minutes, and it's 3 p.m., we're at 78%, and I'm also filming this in front of the uh, Philippine consulate, so hi to all my friends in the Philippines. Now we're at Barnes & Nobles, I wanna pick up a book for a trip I'm doing tomorrow. Come on. So I'm trying to pick up a book for a trip to Puerto Rico for the weekend. I know some of you might be wondering, why not just use your Fold and the Kindle app and read books on it? That's a really good idea. However, you know, this screen is very, very sensitive and the beach and sunscreen and sand is not a good combination for this screen when you flip it shut. So I actually prefer to just pick up a light paperback book every time I go to the beach. By the way, a tip for you all, when shopping for books, there's an app called Goodreads, which is like what Rotten Tomatoes is for movies. It's a great way to see if a book is good or not. All right, where to next? I think I want some coffee. You know one area where I really like the big tablet size screen is when looking at maps? Mato Espresso, 4.6. The best coffee ever, let's head there. So we made it to Mato Espresso, and they say here that if we use the app to order, it'll be $2.50. If we order at the register, it's 3 bucks. So let's save some money and download that Mato app. We have 5G here, so the camera didn't even capture it. It installed in a jiffy. Let's order. Would you like an iced coffee? Okay, what do they have? Cold brew for you. And see, it's two fifty a drink. We saved a dollar. Okay. Now that I'm caffeinated, time for some first impressions. I guess we can start with the color. This is probably more gray than it is green. Earlier at Barnes & Noble, I actually asked Chai to film a shot of this phone on top of a green book. Even then, I don't think I was able to really get any of the greens come out. This is green. My watch strap on the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro is gray. This is black. You tell me, but I think it's definitely more gray than it is green. So that's settled. The other thing I wanted to talk about is the size of the cover screen. Samsung says that the phone, they've actually made the phone a little bit shorter, close to three millimeters wider. And that's always been a complaint about the cover screen on the Fold series because oftentimes you're not gonna always wanna be using your phone like this. You know, if you're scrolling through Instagram, if you're on the subway reading text messages, then you'll probably just have your phone like this. That's how I choose to use it. And there've been, you know, competition out there. Xiaomi has a phone out in the market today. We did a video on the Oppo Find N and Huawei has the Mate X2. All of those phones have a much wider front cover, so much so that when you use the phone shut, it does feel like a regular smartphone. Even with those adjustments, this phone still feels a little bit narrow. I can type on it, but I don't really enjoy typing on it. So I kind of wish that it was still wider than it currently is, even if that meant the phone being shorter. The other change they made is in regard to the under display camera. I don't know if you can see it. It's going to be very difficult for the camera to film. But in person, I have noticed that it is not as visible as it was on the Fold 3. Samsung introduced the under display camera on the Fold Three last year, so I'm curious what selfie samples are going to look like because you're basically taking a selfie with half of the pixels actually covered. Let's see if they've made an improvement this year. During my briefing, I was also able to talk to Samsung engineers. So take a look at the hinges and you'll notice that the hinge on the Fold 4 is actually smaller than on the Fold 3. And they did that so that they could keep the phone roughly the same size, but then minimize the bezel so you're getting more screen real estate inside and out. Actually, when you put them like this, you can notice the height difference a little bit more, but the camera hardware on the Fold 4 is all new. So we're going to head to the closest pretty place, which is probably Bryant Park, to take some photos so that we can actually do some real world 
camera comparisons. Come on. One thing I love about filming in downtown Manhattan is sometimes you have old buildings like this one and there are also like newer buildings with, made out of glass and steel so I'm going to take a picture uh, and use my zoom lens and I'm realizing that the uh, Fold 4 actually has a 3x zoom lens and forgetting that this one only has a 2x zoom lens so it's nice to be able to zoom in further. In this first photo sample you'll find that the extra zoom let me get in tighter on the building. And even in this next one of the Chrysler building, when I zoomed in digitally to 5x, I was able to capture more detail on the Fold 4. I kind of like the Fold 3's photo better here because of its warmer tones, but both phones did a great job against the light. Here it's very evident that like on the Flip 3 versus the Flip 4, the 1x lens on the Fold 4 is wider. You don't even see the building that's in the Fold 4's photo. Now let's take a look at some flowers. This one is interesting. The Fold 4's photo has more detail in the flowers. Notice the orange spots are more visible on the petals and there's more contrast in this one. The Fold 4 does a better job managing highlights. Notice the sky behind the taxi isn't washed out. I'm still trying to find out if the ultra wide angle camera is wider too, maybe just by a tiny bit. Now, because the tele lens is now 3X versus 2X, portraits reflect those differences too. Both of these portraits of Chai look great. At 1X, they're very similar also. On portrait samples with me in it, apart from the differences in zoom, I notice that maybe because I'm in the sun, my skin tone is rendered differently on both phones. I'm much more yellow on the Fold 3, while on the Fold 4, my skin has a more reddish tone. When it comes to selfies using the under display camera, I like the Fold 4 photos best because of its better contrast. But still, these selfies are not anything to write home about. Because of the way pixels are hidden, when you try to take a selfie using the under display camera, there's a little bit of a ghosty effect. And then when you take a picture, take a look at the preview. Originally, it's really ghosty, but after a while, the camera does it, its magic and it does some adjustments. I think we should go out and find some food, but I'm wearing my Izzy Miyake on place pants today because he passed away this week and I kind of wanted to commemorate his life and I really want to take an OOTD which reminds me of a really awesome feature of the Fold 4. If you press this button over here, what it does is it turns on cover screen preview. She can take the photo but I can also see how I look like so I can kind of like take my own poses while she's taking the shot. I know I said food and Bryan Park Grill is one of my favorite places to eat in this area, but we need some low light photo comparisons. So I'm gonna go on Google Maps and see if we can find a bar to go to. I found a bar nearby that looks pretty dimly lit. The cocktails look great too. Finding this bar was like hitting the jackpot. It was dimly lit, but also very pretty and empty. Notice in this first shot how the white balance is different. The Fold 3 is a bit more aggressive. It seems stripping the scene of the natural warmth from the lamps. Here's an ultra wide angle sample. Notice how much more mushier the Fold 3's photo is. Look at the reflections of the light on the ceiling. You can't even make them out. Also, I'm noticing the same red versus yellow coloring in this photo. Anyway, we make it to the bar where an assortment of liquor bottles adds a splash of color. So far, so good. Both phones are performing well. The challenging part about filming in New York during the summer is that the sun sets closer to like 10 p.m. So we always either have to stay up late if we want to take low light, you know, photo comparisons like what we're doing today, or we find a spot like this. And we looked out today, we're at the Ceylon Bar uh, at a hotel across Bryant Park. 
Got myself a cocktail. Before I take it some photos. Cheers. My Negroni tasted great, as great as it looks in these photos. Chai's cocktail wasn't as pretty due to its color, so we took it to an even darker spot in the bar where night mode finally kicked in. Which of these shots do you like better? For me, it could go either way. One last shot, night mode with a human subject. I've gotta say the bar was darker than it looks in these photos, but I don't think there's a significant difference in quality between the two, maybe just color balance. We have more work to do, but our bartender Dylan is such a great uh, bartender and we all love cocktails, so we ordered a separate. This, by the way, is we're using the, not the, the selfie camera, this is the rear camera, and we're shooting at 4K, 30 frames per second as well. All right, that applause isn't for me. We're at Bryant Park still, uh, and there's a concert going on, but we might have stayed a little bit too long at that bar. It's definitely a must-see if you are in New York, uh, but I think this is where we need to end this video. We need to leave time for our review videos or more content for our review videos, but I wanted to do one last battery check. It's 7.35 p.m. I've used the phone for about 7 hours and 20 minutes, but screen on time is at 3 hours and 22 minutes and the official battery check, our last one, is 25%. Overall, I actually really enjoyed using the Galaxy Fold 4, but I kind of like the Galaxy Flip 4 better and if you haven't seen our 24-hour video, we'll put a link up here as well as down below. We're still working on our review videos, so if you guys have any questions about the Flip 4 or the Fold 4, leave them down below. If you're looking to pre-order the Galaxy Z Fold 4 or the Z Flip 4, we'll put the links down below. You should definitely check it out because you get a storage bump up and some other discounts and freebies. Anyway, make sure you're subscribed to this YouTube channel and hit that bell icon so that you get notified as soon as we publish new videos. Follow me on social media because I will continue to post sample photos, some commentary that didn't make this video, and then for news and updates, make gadgetmatch.com your daily habit. Until the next video, I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for dropping by.